Welcome everyone, my name is Hassan and this is going to be our first lab session on Fluid Sim in which I'm going to provide a bit introduction to Fluid Sim, uh, a bit background on what is Fluid Sim and then we'll look at one example in which you will see main components of a nomadic circuit. Let's begin. So what is Fluid Sim actually for more than 20 years this software has been implemented by uh, like several industries for designing diagram and circuits related to uh, pneumatic and hydraulic system and recently it's been used for electrical engineering too. So uh, actually this software has all needed components in order to design a nomadic or hydraulic system. And uh, apparently this software help us to better understand if we have designed, for example, a circuit, that circuit is going to work properly before real world implementation. And it is a very useful software for understanding nomadic and hydraulic concepts. Okay, let's look at the very first example that we have for today. So it's going to be actually your assignment too. So the, the aim of this example is to design a simple pneumatic circuit which contains uh, actually main components needed for actuation in a pneumatic system. So the very first component that we have is compressed air supply. So you know compressed air supply provides the air for pneumatic system. In actually in our lecture I'll provide more details about how compressor or compressed air supply uh, works but here we just uh, need to know that for a nomadic system what we need is air in terms of uh, basically uh, if you want to actuate a system at the end right the second component is the air service unit one of the most important thing that we need to know about a nomadic system if we are providing the compressed air we need to actually clean that air as much as we can because if there is a dirt inside that air at the end the performance of the pneumatic system is going to be uh, less so we need to have an air service unit as you see in here and this air service unit in industry is usually called FRL in which we have filtration, pressure regulation, and also uh, lubrication. During the lectures, we will see more details about how this air service unit works. The, the third component that we have for this circuit that we are going to design is manifolds. So manifolds are actually a sort of junctions for distribution of fluids if it is a hydraulic system or gas if it is a nomadic system. So they are, they are used to provide nomadic power to a few different locations for supplying uh, basically air to different actuators if needed. Let's look at the, the fourth component that we have in here. This is actually three uh, way end position way valve. So what we have in here is we are going to use a sort of com configurable directional valve. During the lectures we, we will have lots of discussions about how these uh, directional control valve works. But as you see in here, uh, basically when we want to call them any S square represent a position. So as you see in here, inside this position we have three different ways. So from here to here, I'm going to assume it as one way. And the other one is in, there, is in here, which is actually a blocked way. And if you look at this square, we have the same thing. We, it is a blocked way in here. And this one, which is going to be at the end, is going to be connected to the actuator, is actually open now from that side. And this is going to be at the end for us, the terminator or the exhaust way. Okay. So we'll discuss how this directional control valve works. They are very important in nomadic and hydraulic system. And the very last component that we have for 
this uh, circuit is single acting cylinder. As I said, we have uh, different levels in a nomadic system. For example, if we get back to here, we have the compressed air supply in order to provide the air. We have the air service unit in order to actually provide a clean air for us and manifolds which is going to be a sort of junction for us and then we have the directional valves as you see in here so depending upon on the actuations that we have for the act uh, for this uh, directional valves we'll see how it works and how it can provide the air once it is needed for the for the uh, actually the actuator so the very last component of the nomadic system is actually the actuator and you know the aim is to provide some sort of actuations based on provided air supply so what we have in here you see like this cylinder has one way one path in order to have like the air so if we provide the air from this for example in this side or let's say from this side to this cylinder when the air goes inside this spring is going to be compressed so once this spring is fully compressed we have the actuation in here right so once that actuation is done and this directional control valve is somehow mechanically for example is going to be actuated so what will happen is this compressed spring is going to be released and returned to the initial position and all of this air is going to be out of this basically uh, exhaust valve that we have in here okay so this is how this system works and at the end we want to make this circuit in which we have at the beginning we have the like the uh, air supply which is the the compressed air and then we have air service unit and once we have the air service unit we have the clean air and after the clean air we have a sort of manifold and from the manifold this air is going to be passed inside this uh, directional control valve you see in this position the path is blocked so if we mechanically as you see in here it's going to be mechanically actuated once it is mechanical actuated, this path is going to be connected to this arrow in here. And then once this uh, pipe is connected to this arrow, this is going to be connected to this pipe there. And then we are going to provide the air for the, for the cylinder. And finally, we'll have the actuation inside this single acting cylinder. Okay. Now we have a bit background about this circuit and how it works. Let's look at the software. Okay, everyone. Now it's time to look at the Fluid Sim software. Similar to any engineering software, as you see, we have different toolbars like File, Edit, Insert, Draw. So during different labs, we'll see how we can use these toolbars. And we have like a standard symbols, as you see in here, we have pneumatics, electrical controls, and even symbols related to the digital technology. So for today, our focus is going to be on pneumatics, right? So we will look at different components in here. You see we have all symbols related to the actuators, all uh, symbols related to supply elements, directional valves, flow control valves, pressure control valves, measuring instruments and sensors, valve groups, vacuum technology, and proportional valves. And these are actually the, the, the components and symbols that we are go going to use in our different labs and different lab sessions actually. So in here we have the file. So for any uh, pneumatic a design of any nomadic or hydraulic uh, circuit what we have to do is just hit this new and then uh, the next step is going to be basically fine right so usually I uh, actually choose this show grid because it gives me uh, the, the chance to have a better arrangement for the different components that I'm putting inside right so based on the circuit that I showed we need uh, five different components one of them is single acting cylinder 
the very last one that we saw and then we have to look at the supply elements we have the compressed air uh, supply we need the air service unit and we need the manifold okay so these are the three components that are coming from the supply element and from the directional control valves i'm going to choose the uh, three by and bay uh, configurable valve okay now we have all components needed for designing the circuit what we have to do is just connect those components so the first thing that i'm going to do is just rotate this one by uh, 270 degrees and then just connecting this two so now we have the air the supply air and then this supply air is going to be cleaned by this filter in here by this air service unit and the next step is connecting this manifold to this air service unit and then once it is connected the next step for me is to connect this uh, actually uh, this manifold to the directional control valve in here okay so this directional control valve is going to be connected and it is already connected this single acting cylinder already connected to the number two now we have all connection needed but we have to actually adjust this directional control valve a bit. So the first step, because we need some sort of actuation for this directional control valve, we can just double click on it and then go to the configure valve. We can look at the manually, uh, actually, we want to have the manual actuation. So I'm going to choose this one first. I'm going to choose this one. And this is going to be left side actuations and we need to have uh, for the right side, we need some sort of actuation too. I'm going to choose a spring return. Okay, so we have all actuations needed in here. We can do other sort of basically configuration for this uh, directional control valve. But for today, I'm just going to focus on the actuation. Okay, so as you see here, the air is going to be provided from this path, but it is going to be blocked in here. And then for number three, it's actually our terminator or exhaust side. So we have to add the terminator in there, right? So what I'm going to do is to add the terminator there. So we just need uh, first click on it and then right click. So the terminator is added, there, right? So now we have everything needed for designing this circuit. As you see, we have everything connected. And as you see, it is normally closed, so it's a normally closed position at the beginning. If we provide the air supply, we don't see the air in there. But if we actuate this, actually, directional control valve, we see how the air is going to pass through this pipe, and then we'll have the actuation for the cylinder. Okay, now what we can do is just to start and then hit this start button here. So if we do this, uh, we'll see like we have the dark blue which means that we have pressurized air in there but the the light blue in there it means like we don't have any sort of air so in order to provide that air we have to actually mechanically actuate this directional control map so what we have to do is just bring the cursor in here you see a finger so if we just click on it we have an actuation right okay so you see this single acting cylinder is going to be actuated so once it's actuated you see it is fully compressed when i release it because it's a, a spring return so it's going to be fully released this spring being returned and there is this air is going to be passed through this terminator right okay now let's look at a few uh, other things in there if we uh, just let me stop this simulation if i uh, click on this you see we have different operation pressure max flow rate we can change uh, different things that if we want and the same thing we can do here for this air service unit we can change the nominal pressure for that okay so the very last step in here to put some sort of naming whenever you are dealing with designing a circuit you have to provide some sort of naming for different components that you have in there so for for this cylinder what i'm going to do is just uh, double click on this and in identification side I'm going to write 1a okay so then hit okay and for this uh, basically 
air service unit or for for this directional control valve first we can put the name of one v1 and then in here for the air service unit we can put this name there and for the manifold we can also put a name if you like so we can say it is once okay so now we have the naming ready for for this different component of this circuit we can add if we want we can add some description uh, or the name of the designer of the circuit and here we can go to the draw for example and then text we can write the uh, here we can just put this uh, cursor there and we can write whatever we want so we are going to I'm going to write like lab one but you, you need to follow the instruction there lab one and I'm going to write fluids okay so it's going to be on left horizontal and top vertical okay so this is going to be in there as lab one fluid C. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching.